Well, welcome to church. If you have your Bibles, let's go to um, let's go to Proverbs chapter thirteen. Proverbs chapter thirteen. I'm going to read one passage of scripture uh, right there. Proverbs thirteen, verse twelve says this: Hope deferred, hope deferred, makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. One more, one more scripture I want to read, and then we'll go. Micah chapter four, verse nine. Uh, says, why do you cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is there no king in thee? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the Bible. We thank you for the word, God. We thank you for the spirit of faith. God, we thank you for the atmosphere in this room, God. I, it, it, is, it is thick. It is real. God, it is, it is evident that you're going to, to do some uh, uh, amazing things in the lives of your people. So, Father, I just simply pray for this word. The Bible does not need any help from me. It can literally preach all by itself. And so, Father, we simply uh, read your word, illuminate your word. God, divide it as you see fit and place it into the lives of people where they're currently living. And, God, may we walk out of this place differently, changed, healed, set free. And it's in Jesus' name I ask it. And everybody says amen and amen. If you're taking notes, I want to I preach to you for the next few moments from this title, Hope Hits Different. Hope Hits Different. If you have teenagers, uh, like I have one, soon to be two, uh, there's this new thing going around and culture hits different. Uh, hits different to them. I, I looked it up and did, look, there's a lot of different definitions, but the one I chose to go with today hits different is to have a marked effect or influence on to affect severely. So for instance, if we go out to eat with my daughter and uh, the, the, the meal was great or the something was good, she said, man, that those French fries, they hit different. In other words, they laugh, they, they, more, they, they, they left a lasting effect on her. Like they were good. And so I want to kind of, kind of, kind of use that, that frame to kind of unpack a few things about this thing called hope. Uh, because if you catch hope, if you realize what's available to us in hope, hope will hit different. We're living in a world today where uh, a, a lot of, there's a lot of reasons uh, to be hopeless. Uh, if, you, if you look at the world, you look at the news, uh, there's a lot of reasons, a million reasons why we could wake up and feel like we are hopeless uh, the two best candidates that we have to run for president, one is, has dementia and one is orange. Like, that's the best that we have? Like, you would, like, that's the best two people we can put forward to run our country? And so if you look at those two jokers, you would think, man, I don't have no hope. But how many people know our hope is not found in the world? Come on, our hope is found in Christ and Christ alone. And if we allow, if we allow culture, we allow the news, we allow, we allow society... Uh, if we allow it, we, we will often we will often bring our value system or our belief system or our thought process down to their to, to their level, and uh, there's a lot of reasons I believe today as God's church to have hope. And if there's one thing that you and I need to capture today, if there's one thing that you and I need to understand today, like we we need we need more hope. Like we need more good news today. We need more faith. We need more joy. We need more praise. We need more encouragement. Like we, we need more of the things that God's word prescribes for our life. And if you came in today feeling hopeless, you've came to a great place today because we are known as a hope factory where we produce hope and we preach hope and we talk about hope and we, and we, we, and, and we lift up the name of Jesus who is hope. And so if you came in despair today, in a valley today, you've came to the, to the right place. Hope is what I'm dealing. Hope is what I deal. Hope is what our church deals. Like we are hope dealers. We don't deal negativity. We don't deal division. We don't deal isolation, but we deal hope. Hope is who we are. Hope is what we do. Hope is in our DNA. Hope is what I preach and what I prescribe to. If you're looking for a negative preacher, you've came to the wrong church. I preach the good news of the gospel. The gospel is good news. The Bible is good news. It's, 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 all, it's all promises of God to his people. Like, this is, this is a book of hope. I love the book. Of, I love the Bible. I love what Proverbs says. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope is literally holding on to the promise of better, meanwhile being surrounded by the worst. And I don't know about you. I don't know if, uh, how, how you're living, but I don't, I don't wake up hoping for a bad day. 
I don't hope to find more problems. I don't hope to find more negativity, but I wake up hoping to find Christ and hoping for the best and believing for the best and hoping that this day will be the greatest day. I don't, I don't wake up hoping that this will be the worst day. I, I, don't, I don't wake up hoping that our church will be half full, but I wake up full of hope, hoping that this is the day. And if we're gathered together, then this could be the day where people are, uh, that are lost are found and people that are sick are made well. Like I wake up every day full of hope. Why? Because I serve the one who is hope. Hope is, listen, listen to this, hope is the result of faith. Hope sees the invisible and believes the impossible. For the real sign of faith and having, uh, having a hope is maintaining the level of, of God, or let me say this, god fidence that, that no matter what circumstances come your way, you don't let the circumstance, struggle, or trial steal you of your joy and of your peace and of your future. And what I love about our God is, is that he already has exactly what we need before we even ask for it. Like our God has this way of knowing exactly what you and I are walking through today, knows exactly what we need today, knows exactly the word that you need and the song that you need and the conversation that you need. He knows exactly what you need to to meet the need exactly where you are. Like nothing takes him off guard. There's nothing that our God hasn't seen. For the Bible says he is our ever-present help in times of trouble means if you find yourself in trouble God's not nervous he's not caught off guard you're not walking through something that he doesn't have the power and ability to pull you out of like our God is is bigger than our problems he he's not stressed he's not full of anxiety he's not worried but he's in teetotal control today knows exactly where you where you are knows exactly what you've been walking through and he's coming today to give you the hope that you've been longing for that's a good place to say amen And so the problem that we have in the church today is many people are walking with the Prince of Peace but have none. A lot of people are in the the church, they, they know the healer but are walking in sickness. They are walking with the truth, but living life as a lie. And so the problem we have in church is we, are, we, we come to church and we serve Christ and we got saved and we got baptized and we serve on the team, but we wake up every day, no hope in our spirit. The Bible says that, that hope deferred makes the heart sick. If you, in the Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Why do you think the enemy is after the hope? He's after the heart. Because if he can get your heart to be hopeless, then, he can, then everything that you do flows from it. You'll never tap into the full potential of God. You'll never see God finish the work that he started. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Here's what I got wrote down. We have access to all that God has. But we wake up and find ourselves living life with no hope. Like you understand, we, ha- we, we have access to everything God has. Everything God says we can have, we can have. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. And I would say a little deeper than that, we have not because we know not. Like if you're not digging in this word apart from a Sunday, then you're going to be void of hope in your heart. If the only Bible you get is when I give it to you, of course your heart's going to be sick. Like you need to get in God's word daily. Like if you spend more time on Facebook than you do the book, it's obvious you're going to be heart sick. If you spend more time listening to the news and all the stuff that you're trying to shove down earth, of course you're going to be sick. Why did the Bible, the Bible says above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. The Bible goes on to say hope deferred makes the heart sick. So I was trying to research this thing called hope and, you know, I think it's one of the things that the enemy has attacked greatest is, is the hope that we have in Christ. And I began to try to, try to find some, some different things I could, avenues I could preach down. And I kept coming across this one, this one research um, called learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is a state that occurs after a person has experienced a stressful situation repeatedly. They come to believe that they are unable to control or change the situation. So they stop trying even when opportunities for change become available. It's called learned helplessness. It's a state that occurs after a person has experienced a stressful situation repeatedly. Research goes on. I did some research. Research shows me from 2020 to 2022, the the number of anxiety and depressive disorders have grown by over 28% 
Anxiety disorders have grown by over 25%. Young adults ages 18 to 20, 25 have the highest rate of experience in mental health conditions at 30.6%. Transgenderism has grown from 1% to over 7.6% in the last two years. That's an alarming rate. Think of that, mental health condition, that 30 out of every 100 students that you have, Dakota, at youth are dealing with mental sickness. There's a new thing that just came out called transabilism, that now teenagers are identifying as disabled. True. Under our watch. Why do you think, why do you think they're identifying as disabled, transabled? Because teenagers don't think they have any hope. For the last three years, they've been forced to, now we even do school and public school system on an iPad. Schoolology on an iPad. We have conversations on an iPad. We, we, we text message on an iPad. We look at pornography on an iPad. We get our value system off of the iPad. We, 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 we get our, our, who we are from, from social media. We get our value based on how many friends we have. And of course, we're raising up a generation that feels hopeless. Can I tell you, don't feel sorry for the church. This is not the, these are not the bad days. Like these are the great days. God has given us a slow pitch softball from heaven saying, son, it's time to hit a home run. People are empty of hope and we got the greatest message of hope. And so if we're not careful, like as adults, Our kids follow our actions. And so if you spend all your days on your your device, your kids are going to spend all their days on their device. If they don't see you making church a priority, when they grow up and have a family, church will not be a priority for them either. If If they see you every day not reading the word, then why do they feel like they need to spend time out of their day reading the word? Because as the parent leads, the child follows. And as as a mom and a dad, if we're walking void of hope, how do we expect our kids to have hope? But I believe as parents and as men of God and women of God, we get to set the tone and the culture of our home. Like, we're not gonna gonna let society and culture rob us of our joy, rob us of our future, rob me of my peace, rob me of my joy, rob me of my hope. Like, I'm not, I I don't prescribe to what the world is selling. And our minds, make no mistake about it, our minds, your kids' minds, are under attack. Why, why, are they, why, are our kids, why are our kids the focal point of every demonic thing the government's trying to do? Why? Because if the enemy can get our kids, he can get our future. And as adults, if, if he gets us, then he also gets our kids. And the danger that we face today is many of us have, have let what was, was supposed to be a season become your lifestyle you've let this season of struggle now all of a sudden become your identity as who you are and what was meant to be just a season to walk through has now been a place you camp in and and no 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 wonder you wake up feel of a void of hope no wonder you wake up depressed no wonder you wake up full of anxiety because you have let what was supposed to be a season to to, re, to redefine you become a a season or a place that you are actually defined in Like God is not going to leave you and push you through a season and leave you camping in the middle of a struggle or a stronghold. But if you keep hold of Christ, come on, he's going to not only take you into it, but he's going to lead you through it. I feel like I'm up against the wall today, but I'm going to get through it. In other words, what could have, what you could have dealt with in one fight has now become a war that you'll fight on the daily. What was meant to be just a battle, just a fight, like a one-round fight, a struggle, but you know greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Like I might have to fight him one day, but I know that I got the power inside of me to make this fight end today. And many of us have settled into this land of the dysfunction and settling into a land of not having any hope because you bought into the devil's lies that you're never going to get out of what you're currently living in. 
And I've come to tell you, the devil is a liar. You do have hope today. Our God is still a healer. Our God can still set you free. Our God can still break every chain. Our God can still repair what's broken. Our God can still touch that marriage. Our God can heal that cancer. Our God can touch your mind. Come on. Our God has hope today. The church has hope today. Come on. Our our God specializes. Man, God is faithful and can do miracles and can provide I love a song we're going to be singing soon that God can make a way where there is no way. God can restore all that the enemy has stolen. No matter how bad your life is, God is a redeeming God. He can redeem everything the devil has stolen. All the years that you've lost, he has a way of restoring all of that to you. Hoping in God, it's, preacher, I thought it was just going to come natural as a Christian. Baloney. Hoping in God does not come natural, and it doesn't come easy. Hoping in God, meaning I'm believing the best when I'm seeing the worst, that comes natural? No, you got to get into the Word. you got to keep showing up to church. you got to keep giving in the offering. you got to keep serving. Having hope is believing the best while being surrounded by the worst. Hope is seeing one thing, but believing by faith is going to be another. Hope is seeing this take place, but knowing that you can't see the hand of God in action. But if you could, you could see God behind the scenes working all things together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. That's Bible. Come on, if you want excessive hope, you've got to have excessive work. Like you don't get hope by spiritual osmosis. Like, I've slept with my Bible trying to, to, it doesn't work. I've got to open it up. I've got to study the Word. I've got to pray to God to reveal Himself to me. And when I begin to read it, all of a sudden it gets in my spirit, and I can go through struggles, and I can go through hard times, but I can still be full of hope. Why? Because I know what God's Word says. And many of you are trying to go to war without the weapon. Of course He's going to talk you out of every promise. Of course he's going to tell you you're meant to be addicted your whole life. Of course he's going to give you all these lies about your marriage. Because you don't know what the book says. But if you dive into the word of God and ask God to reveal what you're walking through, God is faithful and God is a God that knows exactly what you need. And if you want to know what God says, just open up his book and he'll speak to you. That this is the hope that we have in Christ. Come on, you're talking about being essential. Hope is essential for a believer. We can go 40 days, study it, 40 days without food, eight days without water, and four minutes without air. But as a Christian, I got wrote down, we can't afford to go a single second without hope. Hope is putting faith to work when doubting is easier. And we live in a culture where it's a lot easier not to have hope and just doubt everything that you see around you. But when you have hope, it's putting, putting faith to work. What's, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things that we hope for, the evidence of what we do not see. And see, the danger of the church is we look around and we think, oh, the world's falling apart. But you don't understand what's happening in this room is happening all across America where churches are being full. Not every church is on sale. Not every church is quitting. Not every church is dying out. There is a remnant of people all across this world, and I know all across this nation, that as I'm even preaching today, there are rooms full of people all across this world gathering together, believing that we will be the generation that sees the second coming of Jesus Christ. Christ. Come on. We got the hope of the world. We are the hope of the world. We're the God's local church. And if you don't want to have hope, here's your prescription. The opposite of hope is despair. I don't know about you, but I choose hope every day and twice on Sunday. Who wants to walk around all poor pitiful me? We ain't got no hope, no future. Jesus, hurry up and come back. I got family members that need saved. Like, I want him to come, but hold up. Like, I got people that I got to lead to Christ. Like, I'm not walking around all we're defeated. No, I'm victorious. All the church is losing. No, the church is gaining importance. All the, they're, they're trying to silence the voice. Now they're giving me a platform to preach from. Like, I'm not walking around defeated and in despair. Man, I, I, I've, got, I've got the hope of Jesus Christ inside of me. 
And if you've been saved, you've got the hope of Jesus Christ inside of you. That if God saved me and God saved you, then why can't God save somebody else? Hope is, hope is still available today for your life. Hope hasn't left. Hope is still here. Hope is in our DNA. Hope is what we have access to. And even though you may not see it, you may not sense it, you may not feel it, but I came with a message from heaven today saying hope is coming and hope is available. And when you understand that you have the hope literally inside of you, that's why the Bible says in Micah 4, 9, is there not a king in you? Like you're walking around in despair, is, is there not a king in you? You're walking around full of anxiety, is there not a king in you? You're walking out with no hope. Is there not a king in you? Because when you understand you have a king on the throne of your heart, like Jesus literally residing inside of, there's a king in the inside of me. Like King Jesus, the Holy Spirit resides inside of me. Like your body, if you're saved, my body, as, I'm be, as I was saved, has now become the temple of the Most High God. Like, the, like God literally lives inside of me and resides in me. So when I know I got a king in me, it changes how I walk. It changes how I pray. It changes how I parent. It changes what sites I visit on my phone. It, it changes what friends I surround my life with. When I got a king inside of me, come on, it changes. Is there not a king in you? Because you wouldn't want to quit if you had the king in you. You wouldn't settle for sickness if you reminded yourself you have the king in you. You wouldn't settle for living short of the blessing of God if you just remind yourself that you have the king in you. Is there not a king in you? The Bible says greater is he that's where? In me. me. Than, than he that's where? In the world. Greater is he that's in me. Greater is he that's in you than he that's within the world. In other words, if I've, got the, if I've got the king in me, if I've got the Holy Spirit in me, then I've got the power of God in me. Like I've got, I've got the joy giver literally inside of me. Like I've got peace living inside of me. I've got hope living inside of me. I've got everlasting joy living inside of me. I've got faith living inside of me. I've got healing power living inside of me. I've got chain-breaking power living inside of me. I'm not going to walk around hopeless. Come on, when I've got the king of hope living inside of me. And so I just came to remind some Christian people that you're not, you were not born for low living. You were not born to live in depression. You were not born to live with body and pain aches for the rest of your life. You were not born and destined to lose. You're not born and destined to struggle. And you weren't born and destined to be normal. That's not why God created you and I. He did not, he did not create you and I to live in bondage. He did, not, he did not create you and I to live in poverty. He did not create you and I to be sick. He did not create you and I to be inferior, but he created you and I to be world changers. Come on, he, he, he created you and I to be evangelists for his good. He, and he, he created you and I, come on, to do great things that will build up his kingdom. Write this down. I'm about ready to land this plane. You may be in it but that doesn't mean you were born for it. You may be in it, but that doesesn't mean you were born for it. What are you trying to say, preacher? You might be in a state of depression, but you weren't born for depression. You might, be, you might find yourself in marital stress today. You weren't born for marital stress today. You might find yourself body being, being raged with sickness. Can I tell you, you were not created to have your body raged with sickness. You might find yourself in addiction, but you weren't born for addiction. You were born, you, you, were, you, you, may have been, you, you may have been born from an alcoholic, but you were not born to be an alcoholic. 
You were not born to always struggle. You were not born to always be defeated. You were not born, you were not born just to blend in. You were not born to be a drug addict or a drug dealer. You were not born to live off the government's society. You were not born to live paycheck to paycheck. You were not born to pop pills for the rest of your life. You were born uh, to you were not you were not born to be defeated, but you were born to be a difference maker. You were born to stand out. You were born to be blessed. You were born to be highly favored. You were born to love him. You You were born to live for him. You were born to serve him. You were born to worship him. Come on, no more crying, no more backing down, no more running away. Come on, is there not a king in you? You don't don't, don't have enough faith in you to believe that God is working all things together in this moment for the good of those who love him or called according to his purpose? Like, I've got got a word that better is not here, but better is coming. Like, better is on the way. Better is attainable. Better is a place you can get to. Better is what's going to happen to God's kids. What's better? Well, it depends on where you're living life today. But there's better for your life. What's better? Well, it depends on how jacked up you are. But there's better available today. What's better? Well, if you're not saved, salvation is better than being lost. If you're sick, healing is much better than sickness. If you're going through divorce and the, the, the you know, enemy's trying to attack your identity, what's better? Being in the house of God, reminding that you're not a failure, and you may have walked through a hard time, but God's faithful to bring you out on the other side. That's better. Here's what I know. I'd rather be up in a... I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather be, be up, 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 up at God. I, I, here's what I got, I got it written down this way. We have to learn to be up in a down world. Like the world loves to take us down. But I choose to be up. My outlook is up. My faith is up. Well, he hasn't done it yet. Well, my faith is today's the day. Better is here. Well, I've been, I've been praying. I've been coming. I've been giving. Well, it, it hasn't happened. Well, I've got enough faith today to believe that better is here. Like maybe what you've been hoping for and longing for, like it happens today. How can you say it? Because I got hope in me. The Bible calls him the hope of glory. And if Jesus Christ is our hope, then we have no reason to walk around in despair. If Jesus Christ is full of hope, if he is the hope, then why are we settling to live a life short of what God's called us to live? Walking around sick, walking around depressed, walking around from paycheck to paycheck, walking around on pills, walking around acting like you're saved but still dealing drugs on the side and saying God set you free. Why are you walking around double-faced and double-minded? Is there not a kink in you? Why are you walking around every week with this big void in your heart that's o- that, 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 is only, that, that, that can only be filled, it's God-shaped, and can only be filled by God alone? And so why are we every Friday going to the Go Mart, carrying out a case of alcohol, to go home and drink our sorrows away, only to wake up on Saturday morning and your sorrows meet you at your front door. And yet we do it for year after year after year. I'll tell you why you do it, because you felt like there was no hope. And so I came with an assignment from heaven today to remind you that there is hope. It's available to you today. And you can fill in the blank with it, whatever your struggle is. Maybe you go to, the, to, to relationship after relationship to find something that, that has been, been wounded in your spirit for years. It doesn't matter who you get with or what you do. It will never fill the void that was only designed for God to fill. And maybe you've lived like that because you thought, man, it's no hope. If, it was, if, it was, if there was hope, it would already happen. No, 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 no. No, I believe today's the day. Because when you, when you understand what's available to you in hope, it hits different. Like you'll, you'll, you'll no longer, if you read the Bible, 
People would struggle for year after year, layman, man, 38 years, laying by the same pool and body of water. Satisfied with being, being laying there, never getting well for 38 years until hope came walking by. The woman with the issue of blood, bleeding 12 years, hemorrhaging, met every doctor in the land. No matter what she did, what medicine she took, what doctor she saw, the bleeding still continued until one day hope came walking by. And as hope was walking by and healed that woman, hope was on its way to a, to, to, to a household with Jairus. And Jairus' 12-year-old daughter was laying up in the room. And, and she was the, Jairus was, was trying to get Jesus' attention and got why, why he was getting Jesus. And Jesus was healing the woman with the issue of blood. The, the people came back and said, hey, Jairus, it's too late. Man, their little girl's dead. And Jesus shows up at the house of Jairus and he heard the professional mourners. Back in the day, they hired professional mourners to make a commotion. What we have in society today is professional mourners, wailers, always, always wailing about the negative. And they had no hope until one day hope showed up and said, hey, all you negative people outside of the door, I'm going to get in. And hope walked in the room and the little girl was healed. And not only did she resurrect, he said, fix the girl a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. She's got to be hungry. What are you trying to say? I'm saying sometimes you've got to get hope as hope is walking by. You've got to be willing to crawl and you've got to be willing to exercise your faith. Sometimes you've got to jump over a pew. Sometimes you've got to run down the altar. Sometimes you've got to make a step to God. Why? Because hope is walking by.